Carolina Motorsports Park today, and we're here with Ray Phillips from Precision Driving Analytics, and he's brought some toys for us to test out. What what did you bring out today, Ray? Uh, today I brought out a race navigator light version. Okay. And that's mainly used for like track day cars, and it's a data and uh, video system. Okay, and why would somebody want a device like that? Well, um, I guess the main reason is there's lots of ways to spend your money as far as getting on the track, and you can spend your money on go fast items, or you can spend your money on trying to make yourself a better driver. And this should help you become a better driver and find those areas that you can work on to go faster. Yeah, I know personally from my own data analysis that you can actually find where you're making mistakes or that you have opportunities while you're at the track and then can make those adjustments and go faster versus going home looking at data and saying our video and saying, oh shoot, if I had just done this, I could have had a much better track day. Right, well, that's that's exactly right. You know, that's the whole idea is uh, looking at different sector times and what your line was in those sector times and how you, you specifically went faster in that particular area of the course. And this does data and video, right? That's correct. And it can, it can also be accessed on an iPad? Yeah, so it's really easy just to download to the iPad and look at your video and data right there, compare laps, compare videos side by side. So it's got a lot of great features. All right, well, let's check it out. Sounds good. So Ray, what, what, what is the difference between these two versions? Yeah, this one on uh, my right is the, uh, the light version. And that's got the single camera, um, very limited data from the can. It does get like throttle and RPM and water temp and those types of things. Um, this one over here is the uh, RN1 and it has two cameras. It's got a camera facing forward and a camera facing back so you can have picture in picture in the video seeing what the driver is doing. Okay. Um, uh, the ability to get a lot more information from the CAN network. So there's, you know, you can go a lot deeper with the data analysis that way. Um, it also has, I'm going to turn it around so you can see, also has uh, HDMI output so you can stream uh, okay. live from it. Um, so, so like somebody could actually see that from the pits or? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, you need other devices as well, but Live View is one of the, the popular ones uh, that people use for that. So you can stream ver uh, versus uh, uh, Facebook or through Facebook Live or Twitch or whatever. Oh, wow. You know, that type of thing is. Well, um, very cool. Yeah. So the difference in price between these is this one's about $1,000 more at $2,500. Uh, this one's uh, $1,500. So, um, and I guess from a, from a purpose of use, uh, standpoint that the the RN light is for more the club day racer and this one would be a step up from that or just yeah. more features yeah no I think it's a step up from that you know somebody that's uh, doing it more competitively okay. may need the uh, a little bit more information from the CAN network and always helps to have that picture in picture so you can see what the driver is doing um, plus this one is full HD on the camera facing forward okay so I think that one's 60 frames per second whereas this one is 30 frames per second so the quality is is better with the uh, RN1 version too. All right. So you know this is the GPS antenna that's used and it's magnetic so it's really easy to mount. Um, I just fed it through the door and it, the cable's not getting crimped or anything like that so it's you know that's the great thing about these units is that they're super easy to install um, and they come in nice cases and uh, just really easy to take to and from the track. And it's, it's all temporary, no permanent installation. Right, no permanent installation. So Ray, how is this uh, mounted in the vehicle? Yeah, so it's just got a, a really strong suction cup um, here. So, you know, that's not going anywhere. Um, it's got a camera pointed forward, which is over here on the right, um, plugged into here. Uh, this is giving it power, and then it's got a GPS antenna as well. So it, it gets everything that it needs. Oh, plus it's getting um, CAN data from a, limited CAN data from a Bluetooth dongle. So uh, different settings are on it. This is the home screen. There's a button on top here. If you press that, it always takes you to this home screen. And you can go to settings, and you can set up like the driver, uh, which here we've got you, Scott Weatherford. Um, and then the car, which we've got listed as a Camaro ZL1. Um, 
the track that we're at, it's already found Carolina Motorsports Park. That's a nice thing is that it uh, has lots of tracks already loaded into it. Um, so basically, when you go out on track, it just does it. You know, if we wanted to see the camera view, the hood's open right now, but you could click on that and and see the camera view there. And it's 1280 by 720 HD, with the 30 uh, frame rate. Um, and then you can set up all sorts of other stuff here too. Um, get to a network. Um, also, this is how you set it to uh, get information onto your iPad. The iPad will find this device if this uh, uh, icon is checked. Um, and then you can just do the download video and data directly from your iPad. Um, and then if you want to see what's on the dashboard, this one's probably the most common because it's going to give you a gap to your reference lap and Scott did a 139.8 here this morning so it all in, tra in traffic in traffic <laughs> so it would always be comparing against that lap and it's really nice because it shows you green and red and you know just how much uh, time you're off of your best lap there um, and then it's got other uh, screens this is like uh, your laps um, this gives you RPM, water temp, uh, sorry, it's connecting to the ABD2 now. And there's a throttle um, uh, box here on the right. Um, and then miles an hour, and then your fast lap time and your, uh, your current lap time. So lots of information in a small box. And this is it, you know, there's nothing else that you need. This is everything you need, so. so. All right, so we just got back from being on track. Ron had the light uh, unit installed in his car. I had the RN1 installed in mine. And uh, Ray is gonna show us what you can do with that kind of data. Yeah, so we have a iPad set up here and icon at the bottom is the RN1. Uh, it was race navigator analyzer actually. So I click on the three bars there and go to analyzer. Now I can go to laps and choose. So this is uh, Ron James's car. Both are Camaro ZL1s. So I'm gonna choose his and you can see you got the video and the speed. I'm gonna click on this and choose the RN1 data. So I'm gonna choose Scott's 42.2. So now we have video and we have speed and a couple of things we noticed by looking at this it's not Here, moving up. oh swipe this yeah um, if I click over here you can kind of see that the speed was the same at this point but you can see how the speed drops off in Ron's car and continues climbing in Scott's car and they're at the same point of the track here so uh, you know that got us into a discussion of why that was and potentially it's a drag issue because they both cars have different aero pieces on them and we suspect that ron's car may have more uh more drag than the than scott's car but you know, there's a lot of cool things you can do with this i can slide this up so i can see the lines that were taken so i can see from gps that scott took a tighter line through this corner than uh than ron did um so that's one thing but i can also choose something else I, let's say I choose throttle and the position I'm looking at here it's not wanting to select there we go I can see they're both at full throttle but the interesting thing is on Ron's car his is only showing 97% and Scott's is showing a hundred so that's something else to look at you know he, he may be at full throttle and the car is just reading lower but he may not be at full throttle so that could be another reason why we're seeing such a speed difference in these two cars so lots of different analysis that you can do but the nice thing is that it's all really simple you can different you know size different things click somewhere and click click play the the right uh, screen is the RN1, so you can see that has more information. It's got the track map, uh, friction uh, circle, and you can see the in-car uh, in camera as well. So there's a lot more stuff that can go on in the RN1. You got different lap times. So and, and the RN1 had much faster connection speed and download right, speed. Right. 
Oh yeah, there's about a thousand dollar difference between the two, but you can see the RN1 has a lot more features and we weren't getting all the CAN data out of this particular car, but um, but if we got that, which you can in, in multiple cars, then uh, then yeah, you can go even further with data analysis. So um, overall, I think it was a pretty good test. So what would you give it a Ron score? <laughs> and then, uh, I like the, the thing I liked about the RN light was for me, I could look at Scott's fastest lap from this morning. And then in my car, I could also see where on the track, every single point, if I was plus or minus um, on that lap speed. So I thought that was a cool feature. It wasn't distracting to me because I could catch it out of the corner of my eye coming out of the corners. Um, that was a really cool feature of it. Um, diving into this with Ray, I definitely like the RN1 and its, its ability at screen uh, shot is much better. Um, so if I had to choose one, I would choose that. Based on what I know right now, compared to the PDR of the Camaro, I would have to give a score eight. Wow. All right. All right, well, there it is. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.